Hey everyone, and welcome to the Infinite Respawn Podcast. I'm Chicken. I'm Griff. I'm Baka. What's up, guys? What's up? How's it going? There's no Oak this week. Again? Uh, this is like, what, like a month without him? What'd you do? Where'd you bury him, Griff? Where'd you bury I didn't. him? Where'd you he bury said him? that he had some she sort of did family nothing. thing. Me, on the other hand, we cannot say anything. Where did you bury him? <laughs> I'm telling you. He's going to sprout gonna, like, into a big oak going tree. going out there and looking for him like they do with the E.T. cartridges. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he had some sort of family coming into town or something like that. Um, so he is not here again. Maybe next. I'm going to stop saying that he's going to show back up because I don't know. Like, I just can't predict him anymore. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. What's everybody been up to this week? Playing games. Heroes. <laughs> yeah. We've been playing the shitload of Heroes of the Storm this last week, so... I have noticed. Heroes, uh, a little bit of Overwatch here and there. Um, we, we we are continuing your quest for helping the children in WoW. Help oh. the children. So you can get your, your, your Violet Proto Drake. Yeah, this afternoon, like after we're done recording uh, Let's Plays and stuff, we're going to spend the rest of the evening in Eye of the Storm so that we can freaking try to get that one last achievement. I Maybe we can one shot it. Let chicken. Let chicken. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna let chicken do it. He clicks on things faster than I do, so it's years and years of experience. It's like, Especially damn it! Just PvP. let me cap this flag, please. While my freaking virtual toddler is out. Yeah. Do, I, do I need to get on the shaman again and just like make everyone go flying? I don't know. It didn't seem I, to work I've out. All, the I've first already time. got a plan. Do you have uh, gliders for that? On, that me? on your shaman, Baka. Goblin, uh, goblin gliders. Yeah, I think I've got like one or two. What I'm gonna we'll strategize do strategize this later. That's fine. We'll strategize later. <laughs> I just know that you're gonna get into like all of the technical points and things like that, and people who don't play WoW are gonna be like, I have no idea what's going on. Well, then play so. WoW. What, what are you? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you playing uh, heroes forever. for? Like, why are you guys so super into heroes right this second? Loot boxes. The, yeah. <laughs> loot box. Okay loot. then. Every time you level up a character, you get a loot box. But that's forever, though. Like, they're not taking that away, right? Right. No, but it's still like crack. Yeah, Heroes <laughs> of the Storm is fun. Heroes of the Storm that rewards you with little Although pieces I'd of crack give is us better. Other maps. Uh, I'd wish they give us other maps right now than like the what, the the four or five that they constantly give us. I'm I know Hanamura is a is a new map, but I am already so sick of it. Because you've been on it constantly. I'm so sick yeah. of Towers of Doom, Hanamura, and I know there's one one more that we were talking about. The fucking Zerg one. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, can't like, do- we, we have not seen the, the Graveyard one, the Plant one. Uh, the, dragon the, one the Dragon Shire. Yeah, Dragon Shrine. We have not seen that in forever, like weeks now. We barely get um, to see Tomb of the Spider Queen. Yeah, uh, I think we played on that, like, what, once? Yeah, once in the past week and a half. Uh, or the nuke one? Oh, holy shit! I haven't been on the nuke one in forever. One in a few months. Yeah. And no, they don't rotate maps. You just, you just roll a fucking six over and over and over and over again. You know, it's like when Griff crits the party. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That's only Everyone happened, gets like, a crit. Sometimes. You get a crit. You get a crit. Oh, you're all one shot. Damn. <laughs> that's that's not true. I haven't. I don't think I've ever crit Osnit. So. Yeah, you did. You almost killed him in the basement. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. And then you guys sent him home. And then you all got locked in a room together. Then watch Ugg run away. <laughs> <laughs> and flip a table on the news because he doesn't want it anywhere near him. No. Uh, by the way, that um, aside is from our D&D campaign, which I swear at some point will be on YouTube. I know everybody's tired of hearing it, but seriously... Well, I have no it, idea what to do with some of this stuff. I think I'm I think I'm just gonna give up and put up like static pictures of the maps and whatnot and just let it go until I can figure out something better. <laughs> if we can find someone to do like animation for it, that'd be fantastic, but Yeah, who has that kind of skill though? I'll pay you with pie cakes. <laughs> pakes. 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 Uh but that's been fun. We've been doing D and D this week. Yep. It's been interesting. You guys are finally getting somewhere. Baka's character um, got to swim um, with mermaids. Yep, and one touched his butt. It was not his butt. Like, do you swim backwards? What? He was he drowning. Was swimming, doggy. He was like, I oh, know no. you were swimming like on your stomach, and then started going under the water. So she pushed you back up. 
It's like a child like trying to swim. He kind of does an awkward doggy paddle. But you still would have been stomach down, not butt down. Actually, no, he, he was, and then he just kind of like went like a buoy and just started sinking. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, oh, no, no. Okay, I'm okay. <laughs> oh. That's been interesting, yes. for sure. I'm learning so much about you all. Oh. Uh, I've also been on a Witcher kick. I've started the first one. The very first one. The graphics are definitely a little dated, and the combat's so a little dated. So you'll be at it for about five more months. Probably. <laughs> he keeps trying to convince me, too. He comes in here and he's like, okay, so this thing happened in The Witcher, and it's really cool. What I learned yesterday was that it's okay to be a slut if you're The Witcher, because mm -hmm. you can't catch STDs, and you can't get people pregnant, so you might as well just be a hoe. Immune to diseases and sterile. What makes a better one-night stand than that? You still have, like, morals and shit. He's a damn... He's a mutated human thing. Nobody looks... You're fucking like an experiment, an abomination of some <laughs> forms. So that would mean that you would think that you would have less chance to get laid, but apparently he's just like, here's my dick, ladies, let's go. I mean, come on, did that white flowing well, I mean, hair that scars all over his face? Character? I know, yeah, right? I mean, he's attractive. Geralt is badass, <laughs> and all the ladies throw, them at, throw themselves at him. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, eh, hey, you're a bit of a freak, but yeah, fuck it, come on. <laughs> Pretty much exactly like that. <laughs> that's cool if that's what you want to do. I'm just more into, like, monogamy, I guess. Like, I'd just be like, I don't want him to run around and sleep with everything that has two legs just cause. You're the Witcher. You're the <laughs> Witcher. Not, not I'm a witcher. A what do one. I do? Well, I slay demon things and I sleep with everything. You want to go? Okay, let's do it. To be fair, you, I you mean, bard winch, come here. I mean, you're immune to diseases, and I mean, you, you you're sterile, so you you, know, you can only is it do it for fun. Can you sleep with the dudes too, or just the ladies? Geralt is a straight male. Damn it. I mean, what you wanted to make him gay? Should be equal. I mean, come on. If you're really willing to just go with anything that has two legs and a pulse, preferably. If you made your own character, like... yes, but if it's a predetermined character with a backstory and defined tastes, you're playing that character. You're not playing... Hawk would do it with whoever. Yeah, but you could create Dragon Hawk. Age. You could make him but a male or female. But you could go with the female. default one, too. Yeah, but you don't have to. But you could. Yeah, but you could. They didn't limit there, that. There, there is... Yeah, he's not a female, though, so... Like, he's a predetermined, he's, like, already set out as a character of, like, this is this character, this is his background, this is his name, and everything else. You don't That's get to, like, fine. pick what he I'm looks like. I'm just saying. Or... I mean, he, there saying. are novels for his backstory, so there's a lot of backstory there already. I think the whole series is based off a novel the novel series anyways. Yep. But apparently it's very different. Uh, yeah, there are definitely yep. some different, <laughs> uh... Really like how the environment in the first game mimics what's in the third game so much. It's so interesting to see what these places look like in, in old well, it's school not mimics, graphics. It's that you are in the place from the first game. You end up there again in the third game. So it's not that it's mimicking. It's that it yeah, is. It, it's the same thing. It's so interesting. Did, did you find the assassin in it? No, wait, no. I think that's the second one. Yeah, Witcher 2, Assassin of Kings. That's the one you're probably thinking of. Well, I was talking about the Assassin's Creed Easter egg. Oh, no, I don't think I found that you one You know, yet. the guy in the white hooded robe dive off a building and landed in hay and killed himself. Aww. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an it's Assassin's Creed Easter egg. Then it was probably Poor in the assassin. second one. <laughs> oh, that's just sad. <sighs> well, if you do that in real life, that's probably what's going to happen. No kidding. I mean, you cannot jump off a fucking 80-something story I mean, building can, into yeah. a thing of hay. Yeah, I mean, like, if it's like a... Maybe a 10 foot drop. Okay, fine. Way tall tower of like 50, 60 feet. You jumping off that, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. Matt Pat, the game theorist, actually did a whole episode on how you could not, how Leap of Faith could not work. So if you wanna see the actual science behind it, it's on YouTube. It's so easy. Human's terminal velocity is high enough, you're going to die. It doesn't matter yeah, how much that's hay. that's generalized. That's why I said if you want to see the science behind it. <laughs> you jump off, you fall, you go splat into the hay. That's the science behind it. Uh, what else? <clears throat> that's all I've been playing. I've been going between Witcher and Heroes. I've been playing Star Wars The Old Republic here and there. Mainly just for the ship battles. 
Yeah, you made another character just so you could have extra ones. <laughs> yeah, they, they limit each character to three times a week. Three battles per week. Wow. So I have been leveling up other characters to like roughly about 20 when you get your, your other ship. Uh, I've got like five characters now where I can just go and hop and do ship battles. Damn. You <laughs> Why got... do they limit you? Because it's free to play and they want your money. Your oh. money. See, if I paid a, a subscription to it, then it'd be like, oh yeah, you can do unlimited ship battles and go and have fun and shoot things all you want. Oh, you're free to play, you get three a week. That Same sucks. thing with the um, the the hide helmet option. You only get it if you sub do a subscription, mm. or if you pay like seven hundred like cartel coin things, cartel which monies. cost real money to buy. Oh, so you had to pay some of those. Well, that sucks. I mean, I guess they got to make their money somehow, but that just seems kind of uncool. Mm. Well, I mean, they also have. Um, Races, races and stuff unlocked if uh, or locked out. Like if you make a, a new character without buying any of the the characters, I think you, you get like human and like maybe one or two more depending on if you're going uh, light side or dark side, uh, and also depending on the the class that you pick. That's the downside of free to play games, I guess. Yep, everything's behind a paywall. Ah, <sighs> uh, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Sucks so much. I've been doing um, Mass Effect 3, which I still haven't finished. Like, I, I end up in lulls where I just don't want to go back to it for a little while, and then I'll play it really heavy, and then I'll stop again. <laughs> so I've been swapping back and forth between Mass Effect 3, and I started um, Dragon Age Origins again. So I made a male character so that I specifically could not romance Alistair because I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> he was going to be like, hello, and I was going to be like, oh my god, Alistair, let's run away together forever. <laughs> and then he's so, not going to want to. Nope. Yeah, so I prevented myself the, from doing that. I knew it was going to happen. There, there is a fun option. Uh, if you go to the... Where the hookers and everything are in... Uh, I forgot the, the, the larger city. Um, <laughs> Denerim? I think, yeah, the, the big city. Uh, but if you go in there and you go to the, the inn or the whorehouse or whatever you want to call it... Um, and you have an option to sleep with a random NPC that you can pick, there is a way to get um, the the elf dude, your character, and Alistair to have a threesome. Holy shit! <laughs> it is apparently really hard to do, and Alistair doesn't know what to coercion make of it afterwards, skill. from my understanding. So, oh, But we know what Griff is going to do. <laughs> That's not true! That's just something I will think about for later. <laughs> She'll be trying to figure out how to get into that option and everything else. I, I, I've i got the internet and Google. I'll figure it out. But I will not do it this time around. I specifically made a character so that I could not romance Alistair. I will not change that. Well, it's no not matter romancing how pretty if it's is. a one-time fling. <laughs> Does that change his um, outcome by the end of the game? Because I know you got the option it to might. like harden him and not. It will probably yeah, harden him. I think him. it might. Yeah, I think it. Oh. Uh, I think that kind of leads towards like hardening him. I don't want to do that then. I like nice Alistair. Oh. I don't need Dick yeah. Alistair. <laughs> God damn it! I hate you guys so much. <sighs> well then, in other news. I hate you all. <sighs> Moving on. What do you want to talk about? The big announcement thing for the week that Baka probably doesn't care much about, but the Dark Siders three. No! Oh my god, I've been preaching it. <laughs> preaching it. So long. Since THQ Nordic bought the Dark Siders franchise, I said they were going to come out with a third one. And they are. And it and tests, it's dealing with um, you know, the, THQ the is one. who owned it originally. Yeah. And but, THQ went under, and there was a secondary company that was like, rose from the ashes, essentially. No, Nordic Nordic Games was like, off by themselves, and they're like, hey. Yeah, and then they acquired it and called it THQ Nordic, so right. it essentially brought it back. I, I would say more like a parasite, where they just kind of come and take all the shit from THQ's body, and they're like, I'm gonna take your name too, bitch. <laughs> That's the creepy. Yeah. It's like put the face on and everything. I'm oh, THQ. Oh, no, stop. <laughs> We're good. I didn't need that. Thanks. No problem. Uh, but yes, we are having our Darksiders 3, which means Darksiders 4 in the next few years after that, and then Darksiders 
I don't know, a game with all five of them in it, so. And you're going to get to play four. as Fury four. versus all the four. lady. Sorry, four. The girl sibling. Super excited. Yes. Yay. People are mad that it's she's Fury and she's a lady. Yeah, she's a mage. Um, she's supposed to be like a caster, but she's got that badass whip. So kind of reminds it. me of Castlevania when like they use the whips. I'm all about it. Some people are up in arms, social justice warriors and whatnot, because, oh my god, you made her Fury and it's a lady, and so of course she has to be angry, and it's like, shut up. Just shut up. It's based on a graphic novel. Go fuck yourself. No okay? shit. I mean, this If this you're gonna be mad about it, you should've been mad about it like a decade ago. No kidding. No <laughs> kidding. I mean, the graphic novel- it wasn't no- brought their, to their attention to trigger on until just now. Uh, well, I've watched uh, the reveal trailer, which is badass. And it has war in it too. War is all chained up, unfortunately, because he's in. He he, he was a naughty horseman, and he got chained up. It uh, wasn't his fault. Nope. No, it was uh, fair enough. It was not his fault. Someone broke the seal. I will seal. forever and ever and ever defend him. It was not his fault. He True. did what he was supposed to do as a horseman. Somebody else broke the damn seal. Should yes. Punish him for that. It was one of the angels. They broke the seal uh, prematurely. And cause the apocalypse. You find out all that stuff in the first game. Yeah. And then here comes war slamming down in the earth, and angels and demons are like, uh, "Who called him? Um, <laughs> help!" And war's like, "All right, I'm gonna here to do what I do best: cause chaos." It's so, time to fight, bitches. So uh, we don't see death, but I assume he'll be in here somewhere at some point, or talked about. Uh, maybe he'll be at the end. You'll see him at the end. Maybe, but we have one more horseman. After this, and it's Strife, uh, so I can assume we'll have he'll have pistols and whatnot. Yeah, Strife's supposed to be a gunslinger. Yep. Right. So, so, so. we've got War the Warrior, Death the Rogue, uh, Fury the Mage, and I would assume Strife the Gunslinger. Yep. So four major roles. Now we just need like a little tiny gnome healing them all. No, Psh, no they're gnomes. they're horsemen. <laughs> they don't need healing nothing. They don't even have like an exact release date yet, do they? Uh, as far as I know, um, I was looking back over the thing. I think it's it a says 2018. 2018. Yeah, it's a 2018 release. Yep. Th- this is so. somewhat pre-alpha, so. Uh, oh, okay, the placeholder is December 31st, 2018 release date for PC4 and Xbox One. PC4? That's no, weird. PC, PS4, and <laughs> Xbox One. PC4. PC4. I like it. Uh, I think we've had like more than four incarnations of PCs. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? But yeah, dark, it looks really good. It looks, you know, fresh since it's an Unreal Four or Unreal Engine Four, so it looks a little different than the other ones. But uh, I think that's fine though. Definitely gonna get this one as soon as it comes out. Need it in my library yes. and my life. Uh, and then I will rant about it until I get the fourth game. <laughs> uh, I well, hope it does uh, really as long well. As- yeah, uh, as long as it sells really well, they, it should be fine. Well, there was I, somewhere I that was bundling, I tweeted about it on our Twitter, somewhere was bundling the first two games for like a super nice price. It might have been on Steam. I got it on um, Steam for 15 bucks for both games. Darksiders, Darks, uh, the War Mastered Edition, and the Definitive Edition. Yeah, so, I, need so, to, I need to grab them. I played the, the first one. I never did get a, to go all the way through the second one, though. Yeah, it's really If you really haven't played good. them, do it. Just do it. Do yourself a favor. You'll enjoy it. Absolutely. Oak hasn't finished the second one either, and he's already... He's like, oh, I'll put down money on the third one. And he's like, you haven't even finished the second one. Go play the second one. <laughs> then okay. tell me about how you're going to put money down, all right? I do find the story for this one kind of interesting. During, uh, you're fighting the seven deadly sins. Uh, one In the gameplay trailer, she actually faces uh, Gluttony, the Lord of Flies. Right. Oh, my God. The, the boss fight actually looks pretty damn good. He's like this big, nasty... Fly looking thing sitting on a gross too. Mm-hmm, sitting on a throne and like the little bugs pick up his seat and kind of rotate him around and you have to kill the bugs under the seat to get him off uh, and then he just kind of moves around and hits you with his big club and then once you get him off you have to fight him on the ground it's, it's a pretty neat fight it's gonna be so fun uh, all I can think of now is that uh, one of the uh, well it's in one of my old edition books for D&D but there is uh, the Mephisto, the Lord of Lies, or, or they put in like parentheses, flies, because he looks kind of like a fly demon. Yeah. Kinda, but it, it's for D and D. I'll have to look into that. Maybe you guys will fight him. Maybe, but it, 
<laughs> that one shot us. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking about a Lord of Hell. There, there's like nine of them. Oh, uh, you never know. Maybe one day you'll be badass enough. Yeah. I, I'm one day. Very, very happy that the series is not dead. It's still alive and thriving. So when it comes out, we will pick it up and, of course, tell everybody about it. I think at this point, you can kind of take when games have a remaster edition come out. You can kind of take that as they may be gearing up for a sequel if the studio is still able to make one. Like, you're not going to well, get a sequel also, to Bioshock uh, anytime soon. It, it's but also a test to see if people are even interested in the franchise yes. anymore. Which I do think that the Bulletstorm remaster was an attempt to gauge the temperature, essentially, of whether or not a, a sequel would do well. But the problem is Gearbox released that remaster at fucking 60 bucks. Yeah. No, it was fifty so, bucks. Oh no, was it sixty? 60. Bucks? It, was 60 it was fifty nine ninety nine. Yes, it was. They re-released it at full price, which is part of why I haven't picked it up yet, as much as I would like to. I just don't want to spend sixty bucks for uh, Gearbox to do stupid shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. I got Dark Siders, Dark Siders War Mastered Edition, and Dark Siders Two Definitive Edition. The two uh, remasters and the original for fifteen bucks. People are going to throw money at you so fast you're not even going to be able to count it all if yes. you give them content like that. Well, and it's not like Gearbox had never released a remaster. It wasn't Bulletstorm wasn't the first one because they did the Borderlands collection, which is Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel and all of the DLC for 60 bucks. So two games and all of their shit for 60 bucks, or one game that didn't have DLC for 60 bucks. And you could pay extra, $5 extra, if you wanted to get a DLC that let you play through the game as Duke Nukem instead of Grayson. Which, why the fuck would you do that? Some people are Duke Nukem fans. I get that, but it's not a Duke Nukem game. It could be. <laughs> it just seems stupid. Well, I mean, it's kind of a... It's in the same genre shooter as what Duke Nukem was. I mean, more of a, a self-referencing parody shooter. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't... I I enjoyed Grayson in the role that he had, and I really don't think that it would be my cup of tea to replace him with Duke Nukem, who I don't care for quite as much. Nope. Uh, some companies do remasters really well, and some companies just kind of drop don't. the ball. Well, Gearbox is fucky with the stuff that they do anyway. Like, I, I love Borderlands, don't get me wrong. I freaking love Borderlands. But I think a lot of the other shit that that company does is super questionable. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. I'm, it makes me worried for Borderlands 3 that I know they're going to talk about at E3 this year. So, yep. we'll see. We'll see. Yes, we will. Speaking of questionable things, the the Halo 5, people were not disappointed with the Master Chief not being in there all that much. Yeah, this is actually a story from last week, but since we didn't get to have a podcast, we didn't get to talk about it. But yeah, um... 343 finally admits that a lack of Master Chief was a huge disappointment to fans. No fucking shit! The whole series, Halo, is fucking based around Master Chief, and you want me to spend more than half a game as not Master Chief? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yep, I mean, it, it, it's because it took away from Master Chief being important. Like, you were, first of all, you were split between two teams, okay? Second of mm. all, you were split into multiple people in those teams. Like, you had to watch out for eight people overall. It wasn't just... I mean, hell... I'm was, a one-man army. If it was Chief and his team, fine. I, I could respect that a little more because then you would focus on the Chief. But it's Chief and his team and other Locke and his team. I think that's his name. If I remember. Yeah, Robert. Locke. Locke well, and, and they his tried team. to draw you into Locke's team a little more because didn't they put Buck from ODST, which was Nathan Fillion's character? Yep. They brought him back too, if I remember. Yeah, it's like, okay. I don't remember much about that game. <laughs> First of all, you should have just let it go at Halo Three. Second of all, you didn't let it go, and then you did Halo Four. You shouldn't have just decided to shit on the story and turn it into a comic book and start all over again. Like. Yeah. They made a lot of mistakes. At some point, I think they just need to retire Chief, let him rest in peace, and move on with the Halo universe. And we've said it like a million times. We have talked about it over and over and over again. That the next Halo game, if you want to step away from Chief, don't call it Halo and then a number that comes next in sequence. Call it Halo and a subtitle 
so that it is its own fucking story and it starts somewhere else and you're not expecting to see Master Chief, which is what you could have gotten away with in Halo 5, but you decided not to and you made it Halo 5, which should have been about Master Chief, but was more about Locke and his discovery of Master Chief and how all these things that he thought were not necessarily the truth and who the fuck cares? See, we're I- here for Master Chief who is a one-man fucking walking army. And all of a sudden, he needs goddamn help. The one Fuck thing off. that I just don't understand about all of this either is, like, I, I totally... Like, everybody in that game, and I played the campaign, like, everybody in the fucking campaign that was your superior officer just didn't even let give Chief the benefit of the doubt. It's like, this motherfucker stopped the Covenant War. Hell, he made peace between the Covenant and the humans. He stopped the Halos from exploding, yet you're not gonna trust with what he says. Yeah, yeah, he I know saved the universe multiple times, but no, he's just a crazy weirdo now. Let's fucking kill him. Yeah, it's or like, lock oh, him up. Cortana's getting the better of him. He's emotionally uncompromised. Motherfucker, does that man ever look emotionally compromised? Yeah, he does have emotions like people, but he's a lot more sturdy and can make better decisions than any of you new fucking Spartans. They like yeah. to call themselves. They're, they're just, they're baby Spartans as I'll call them. <laughs> all they have is armor, and that's that's all that makes them Spartans. I feel like Baka brought this up just to watch us go off on this, because he's like, so about this one thing, and then he's just sat back and kind of twiddled his thumbs, because he because knew we were going to explode. Ch- well, yeah, I, I, I knew Chicken was going to... Halo is more of a, a YouTube thing, uh, as far as, like, What? It's only where and, we met. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I know basically shit as far as the the universe and everything else in halo i would i didn't really play halo uh i i didn't actually start until like halo 3 yeah you played you got an xbox to play halo 3 online with me and chicken and red yep and i had no idea what the hell i was doing nope and then you found out that you could use a hammer and then it was over <laughs> and then I started wrecking people with that, and then everyone's like, okay, don't give him the fucking hammer. No. We'll, we'll fix this. After Chicken and I are done, like, once we finish up Red Dead Redemption, you and I will do the next Let's Play, and we will do um, Halo 2, because we did Halo 1, and now we need to... Please don't shoot me as many times this time. <laughs> I make no promises. Damn it. <laughs> I will okay. promise to maybe occasionally toss the, the sticky grenades a little higher, but... Yeah. It depends on how I feel <laughs> like aiming. But meh. Whatever. <laughs> See, if I could use my mouse and keyboard, this would be, like, way easier. Yeah, well. Uh, but yeah, that that was such a stupid, stupid statement to have to come out and make. 343, fans are disappointed. No shit. I'm so surprised. That's just the most shocking news I've ever heard. Why would anybody be disappointed that you took the main character and made it not the main character? Surprising. Yeah. I mean... And the comics brought up a perfect example. You think you can't make a game without Chief succeed? Halo Reach, bitch. Like, there is no Chief in there. It's just the fucking... Technically, there is. He's there for, like, 15 very, seconds. At the very, very end, only if you pan your camera to the right. If you don't know about it, you never see him. Yep. Which is fine. I mean, that... that was Halo Reach, so you got a subtitle and you understood going into it, it was not about Chief. Exactly. It was a it was a pre... pre I can't think of the word. Prequel. 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 Sorry. The word was there. It was a prequel and it was brilliantly done. They attached you to the characters and then they fucking killed them all. One by one and you felt you terrible up. through it. You're you like, know, oh, kind of like Rogue One. Yeah. Uh. It's... It, <laughs> Like, yeah, you know these characters are going to die. You know this whole planet is going to explode. Actually, exactly like Rogue One. Because you know... You know everything's going to... You're going to lose everything in the end. Exactly. You know you're going to lose everything in the end of Reach. Even though you're playing it still, it's going to hurt. And you know what's coming. But it was still incredibly told. Bungie did... And I really enjoyed Reach. Mm -hmm. I liked the fact that you got to make your character... Like, Noble Six was whoever you wanted it to be. Because you got to customize and everything like that. So essentially it was the only time you get to customize your your single player character. And we could co-op it so it's still whatever. But I thought it was fine. And I think that you can get away with that in future Halo installments. You just have to give it a fucking subtitle. Mm-hmm. If you put a main number on it, we're going to assume Chief is important. Yeah, 4 was okay. And then they just shit on the story. And then 5, they decided to split the story. And 6, they're like, oh, maybe we should go back to Chief. It's like... 
these three games what? are awful in, in, in the Halo universe. It's like, <laughs> you guys have no idea what you want to do, do you? Like, at all. You're just throwing shit out there and seeing what sticks. But then you've got, like, this pristine trilogy beforehand, and then a prequel that kind of fits into that, and you're like, oh, that's so amazing. And then <laughs> you got these three things that are just steaming over here. Yeah, you're like, just don't... Like, uh, that, that's my advice to people that want to get into Halo, is get the Master Chief Collection, don't play anything after that. Play Reach, it's backwards compatible, don't worry about, you can play ODST even, that one yeah, was Yeah, I was fine about to too. say, even ODST was good, I mean, yeah, you, you'd have Chief, you had a subtitle, you knew it was going to be quite a bit different. Yeah, well, because you were a shock trooper instead of a Spartan. Exactly, like the Which tone is fine, was so but different. Just ignore that Halo Four and Five have happened, and pretend that Six will never happen. Yeah, you got the prequel, <laughs> and then you got ODST, and then the th- original three, and that's my Halo universe. I have no faith in in three four three to bring it back for the sixth game to be something that we expect from that series. I don't think they can. I think that they're going to try if, a bunch of new they shit do, again. I will and... be surprised. So yeah. will I. I mean, I will be super shocked, but it's not a game that I am even remotely interested in purchasing at this point. Yeah, and the, the botched release of the Master Chief Collection. Terrible bugs. Yeah, they really fucked the that up. Multiplayer, like, it was bad. Like, I mean, that was one of the worst releases ever. Yep. It was a really shitty release. And luckily, they've patched it and everything, so if you still haven't played the Halo uh, trilogy, like the original set, pick it up now. It's patched. Go ahead and play through it. At least the single player, because good luck on trying to get a game in multiplayer. Yeah, I would say the multiplayer is still rough. Yeah. So, so if you do manage to get a game, enjoy that failure. <sighs> well, outside of that, um, let, let's talk about morals for a second. So, there was a dude that bought basically a package of stuff, of Blizzard things, on eBay. And in that package of things was... The, the gold source code, essentially, for StarCraft. Ooh. And he gave it back to Blizzard when they asked. But people apparently lit up and were pissed that he gave it back. It was like, you should have kept it and distributed it, blah, 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 blah. Where would you stand on that? Do you think it's fine that he gave it back? Which they're going to give him... They gave, Blizzard gave him a bunch of stuff. He, they're flying him out to the studio and everything. So... Hell, they're flying him out to BlizzCon. All BlizzCon, expenses that's paid. Not the studio, all BlizzCon. expenses paid, and he gets to go out with uh, go out for a drink with some of the BlizzCon uh, with some of the Blizzard employees. I mean, yeah. you're getting like rewarded. Like I'm talking for doing about the right thing. Like holy shit, Blizzard's like you did the right thing. All right, cool. He, I mean, he went and got advice from a lawyer too, and the Blizzard's lawyers talked to him about it too. So he's just kind of like. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even going to try. I mean, if he would have never posted anything about this and uploaded it secretly, Blizzard would have not been none the wiser, but he posted it, and they knew who he was. Well, he was trying to be a good person and not disrupt a, a game that's been around for a while you know, by handing out the source code so that anybody that wanted to could go and fuck with it. He wasn't sure what that was either. He's like, oh, well, what's this thing? And then he posted it online, and everybody's like, <gasps> oh, my, oh God. my God, you found a gold nugget. <laughs> I don't know. I I agree with what he did. I think that it was the best idea to go ahead and turn it over. And everybody that's crying about him doing that is just b- a bunch of selfish little pricks. Mm-hmm. You wanted something. They, for they free. basically wanted. Yeah, they wanted the the source code for the basically be dicks. But yeah. So I I think that what he did was great. And I think that you guys should all shut your fucking mouths if you're complaining that he did that. I just wanted the source code. Well, it's not for you. Nope. Sorry. It's just how it is, man. But I think that that's pretty cool on Blizzard's part to be like, you know, we understand that you paid money for this in a a package deal thing, but at the same time, here's all this cool stuff, and we're going to fly you out here and let you hang out and all that junk. God, that's like, all right, cool, you get BlizzCon and whatnot. Man, man, you get to go to dinner with the like Blizz, Blizzard employees. You get to hang out with them. The gods of the world that you play. That is something <laughs> that not very many people... They have a banquet dinner, a benefit dinner with the Blizzard mm-hmm. employees. That shit is $700 a ticket to get into there. And Blizzard is like, hey, we'll have private drinks with you and have dinner. For free. It's like, oh my god. 
<laughs> I, if I had a job, I'd be like, yeah, I'm taking these days off and you don't have anything to say about it. Uh... So he definitely did the right thing. Absolutely. Cause... Did you read one of the... There's a comment, actually, in this article down at the bottom from one of the Reddit users that uh, that somebody posted, you're a, you are selfish for keeping this out of the hands of programmers who can bring joy to hundreds of thousands of people and instead put it in the hands of a crummy company that relies on rehashing other ideas never to use the code again. Shame on you. It's their code. It is their code. And if somebody, if there are programmers out there that could bring joy to millions like that, then why don't they just go ahead and program their own fucking game and bring that joy? Mm. No. You, you, you want to talk about a company that has to rely on rehashing shit? That is rehashing shit, you dumb motherfucker. Oh. Rehashing stuff. But, What's but that, they can Overwatch? do it for free, and then they can go online and troll people and always win. Yeah. And then feel like they, they are badass because no one can beat them. So no, you can fuck off. If you are one of those people, and I'm sorry if this offends you. Actually, I'm not sorry if this offends you. If you're one of those people that feel that way, then go get fucked. It's just how it is, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, on a completely different, different, different note, um, Chicken came across an article. It's actually a couple of years old, but I don't really? mind bringing okay. it up and talking about it. Wow, they just um, tweeted about it on Twitter like yeah, a few I know. days ago. But uh, it's it was a list from 2015 on GameSpot that is titled 15 Super Hard Classic Game Bosses Who Made You Yell and Throw Your Controller. Now, immediately, like, the first thing in that title that should come to mind is the fucking Psycho Mantis fight, right? At least, at least an honorable mention. Right? For back in the day. I mean, it was back in the day when that was new, and you didn't have the internet to go and look it up and see what the fuck you're doing, but for some reason it said that your memory card had corrupted, or your controller wasn't working, or things like that. Like, that was and a ridiculous And he'd rattle off, boss like, fight. certain games uh, on your memory card to, to screw with you even more. Yeah. I mean, that's a crazy-ass boss fight that was probably super fucking frustrating. Chicken was talking about having to walk away from it a few times because he didn't know what to do. Several so. times. I mean, being a kid back then, you're like, yeah, cool. What the fuck is going on? You'd try over and over <laughs> again, and nothing would happen, nothing would fix, and you're like, fuck this game. Well, that game is not on this list at all. Um, neither is any of the Dark Souls content, which I don't remember when the first Dark Souls game came out. Maybe 2015 was before. Really? I don't know. It seems like there was a Dark Souls out by that point. Yeah, well, there was also Demon Souls out before then, too. And okay. Demon Souls was the, uh, the predecessor to Dark Souls. So, yeah, definitely. But this, this list, super hard classic game bosses, included... Bioshock, the original, which is 10 years old this year. So means it, it would have been 8 seven, eight, eight at that years. point. Um, Borderlands 2, which I don't even understand. Like, that's not a classic game. Uh, and what was the other one that was super recent? Oh, Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite, classic game. That game came out the year before that, or 2013, two years before that. It's not classic at that point. Mass Effect 2, or Mass Effect 3. Came out in, what, yep. 2013? So two years really after, remember. before the... It's like, where where do you get this classic idea from? <laughs> like, so I'm I a just, classic person? I'm classic. Well, and I don't I don't know which way the list is supposed to be, like, in as far as difficulty goes. If, it's, if number one is supposed to be the hardest, or if number one is supposed to be just the start of that list, and then they count down, and number 15 is the hardest. Because number one is the Fontaine fight at the end of Bioshock. That fight's not that hard. <laughs> like, once you figure out what you're doing, which should only take you a minute or two, it's really not that bad. It's just a matter of figuring out how the mechanic works. But the number 15 on the list, which I guess would be the hardest one, is Sephiroth from Final Fantasy... Or no, not, Kingdom not Hearts. Not even Final Fantasy, Kingdom two. Hearts 2. Which, okay, I'll, I'll give you that one. And... Absent from this list is that motherfucking fight in the first Kingdom Hearts that I spent two goddamn hours on. Ooh, the Ursula fight. That was not even the Ursula fight. It was, uh, Anson? Ansem? Something like that? Some dude that I had to go fucking fight and it took me two fucking hours? 
That fight's up on YouTube, by the way, if you wanted to see it. I don't oh, ever the, again. The, the one where you're trying to, like, hop on the, the table and chairs? No, no, that one, I didn't like that one either, but that one wasn't nearly as bad. <laughs> but, um, I mean, also on this list, like I said, Bioshock Infinite. It was the end of Bioshock Infinite, and they're talking about... If you played the game, you're at the the final part where you have to use Songbird to come in and smash three blimps, and as you're trying to do that, there are people attacking the boat that you're on and whatnot. And it's like it's it's really not that bad. They're, in the write up for it, they said ammo is scarce, and there's a virtually unlimited there's virtually unlimited waves of mini bosses swarming the deck of the your ship. Okay, first of all, if you'll just take out the blimps that you need to take out, you don't have to spend 16 hours clearing out everybody that walks onto your deck. Secondly, there's plenty of ammo and you can swap guns. I mean, they have a bunch of stuff scattered around for a reason. It's just not that hard. It's not that hard, people. Lou the Devil from uh, Guitar Hero 3 is also on that list. Well, I sucked at Guitar Hero anyway, so even the simplest song was really hard for me. Um... <laughs> Bowser. Bowser was on the list from the Super Mario, like, not even a specific Super Mario game, just mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers series. That's... I, I don't think I ever had, a re even as a little kid, I don't think I ever had a really hard time with Bowser. <laughs> I mean, I've had times where it's like, okay, I died a few times, okay, change up the, once I, I figured out the mechanic, simple. The, yeah, they've yeah, always been I, simple. I don't think I died, like, maybe one, more than one, once or twice. I mean, it's it's all about timing and just figuring out the pattern and the mechanics. Maybe yeah. maybe some people, like, looking at this list, maybe that's the issue, is whoever came up with this list just weren't capable of figuring out mechanics. Because Jack from Borderlands 2, that fight's on there. And that's just a matter of shoot the monster when it comes out of the water, hide behind or the lava, hide behind some shit, shoot Jack a little bit, hide behind some shit, shoot the monster again. It's really not that hard. I mean, Mike Tyson's on the, the list, too, but I feel like he was just kind of thrown in there, maybe, because whoever did this was like, well, I hear, I hear a lot of people bitch about Mike Tyson a lot. It's like, well, I, I mean, maybe that one, if you're, the thing the game is named after, maybe your fight is hard. I have never played Mike Tyson. Uh, from what I can so tell I from Mike, all Mike the lists. Tyson, Mike Tyson will whip your ass. Yeah. Okay. I've, See, I've never played that one. He's so. on most no. of the list that I've looked at, so. Yeah. He's definitely deserving to be there. And I have beaten him and once. It's classic too. It's actually a classic. Yes, game. that one's actually classic. I'll give you uh, that I one. I have I have beaten him once, and that was it. That that's that's all I've been able to do. <laughs> well, Nemesis from Resident Evil Three. Resident Evil Three, I'd be willing to say is is classic ish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, did you have trouble with that one, Jack? And I know you've played all of the Resident Evil games. If you try to fight him, you'll get fucked. You just got to run away. Yeah, so I tried fighting him the first time and didn't go. Yeah, over he'll very he'll well. kill you. You just gotta run away. Why is that even on the list? Because people think that fighting him is the right thing to do, and then they die, and then they get mad about it. I don't fucking know. And I, I remember throwing gotten... my controller at M Bison a lot when I first started playing Street Fighter. <laughs> he's on here. So that one's justified being on the list. Yeah, because he spams his uh, stupid little psycho thing when he goes back and forth across string, uh, screen he just doo, doo, doo. you can't do anything really about it all that much <laughs> I just I like want to like duck really low and kick him in the nuts and see if he stops it then I haven't come back to I, I haven't gotten to this fight yet I've met Kai Lang once in Mass Effect 3 and I know I'm gonna have to fight him again but he's on the list so I'm mildly worried but at the same time I'm also like confident that this will be fine because the rest of these seem like as long as you can figure out the mechanic you'll be all right in this fight so yeah I'm i don't that think i had any kind of difficulty way. with that fight i don't think i had any difficulty with that fight at all uh that one i did not either but it's also because i had adrenaline rush which is basically slows down time for a second so i would just pop out hit adrenaline rush and his lightning fast reflexes <laughs> sorry would turn very slow so i would just light him up and then hide and wait for cooldown pop back out light him up take back cover till my cooldown comes back it was easy cut and dry simple stuff so you just finished out the it's it's all about mechanics it's just people figuring out mechanics so i kind of can't help but wonder and i'll throw this out there to you guys and everybody listening as well do you think that this list is indicative of an issue that we have in gaming which is people scream about wanting a challenge but if they're given any sort of mechanic that they have to learn they don't want that they just want more of the same thing they've been doing for the whole rest of the game like, just shoot, 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 soak up these bullets, okay, die. 
Most Kinda. most bosses in that kind of in those kind of games are just bullet sponges anyway. Handsome Jack was just a bullet sponge. That's it. Or or like as we like to call it since we play, you know, wow, uh tank and spank. Yeah, yeah simple I mean, bosses. I just I feel like some of these though, even with the Jack fight, it was different than the rest of the fights that you had done in the game. There was more of a mechanic to it, which still wasn't the most impressive mechanic ever, but it was more than just shoot this thing repeatedly until it dies. Which is what it's like with a lot of the other ones. But I just wonder if it's an issue of people not really understanding how mechanics work and not really being interested in understanding it. They just want to do the same thing that they've already been doing. Stick them in Dark Souls for a while. They will learn mechanics. <laughs> like that game, it forces you in the most extreme way to learn and adapt. If you do not, you just you do the same shit over and over again. You're just going to keep dying the same way. You've got. Yeah, to I'm never sure allowed to play any other game. No Candy Crush. No Angry Birds. Nothing. <laughs> they they have to play Dark Souls until they beat it at least once, and then Ooh. they'll understand. Wow, not every game is just. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair though, I've never beaten, played, or beaten Dark Souls, but I do but you understand, understand mechanics. Yeah, I understand the concept of mechanics and learning them. I I was talking to Oak about this list actually, and he's like. Well, Bioshock Infinite would be fine if they decided the right fight, because the Lady Comstock fight was really difficult. I was like, no, it wasn't. It's all about mechanics. You just have to figure out how that fight works, and as soon as you figure it out, it's a walk in the freaking park. But we're also at a severe advantage in in that kind of category. We play MMOs, and MMOs, you, almost all fights have some sort of mechanical uh, issue that you have to manage in the game, whether you're fighting mobs or you're fighting a boss or something. They do something that if you do not move or do something right or counter it, you're going to take a significant amount of damage. Green shit starts pouring out of the ground. Move away. Oh, you have a debuff <laughs> on your head. Take it to the back. Spread it around the back so that your party doesn't get it. Like It, it, it makes you learn. learn I these just mechanics. thought of the Baron fight. <laughs> Baron. I rem- yeah, ba- Baron and, and Molten Core. Oh, the one that throws you to the ceiling? Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, the one that gets a little little debuff timer. Run away from the group! Explodes Run away from the group! and kills everyone. I and- didn't know what that did the first time that I did that. Yeah. And I can't remember who I was with. It was, I mean, it was after it was, after it was not an issue to come back to that. I think it might have been you guys and some other guildies and whatnot, and I didn't know, so I stood in the middle and killed everybody. <sighs> Yeah, oh yep. my goodness. You talk about mechanics. If you were uh, a vanilla Molten Core Raider, you fucking learned mechanics. Like, you got that shit down packed. If you did anything wrong, the other 39 people would look at you and you're like, oh <laughs> shit. I remember one time someone, um, or, well, I, I had the bomb and I was like, I ran all the way towards the, the back, like, well away from everyone. And I blew up. And instead of, like, your body falling to the, the ground, Mine got stuck in the ceiling for some reason. <laughs> so they couldn't reach me to res me. Because you were too far up? Yep. Uh, I, I guess, I mean, I guess so. I kind of mentioned that to Oak. And this is like him being here, but not because I did get to talk to him about this. But I mentioned that to, to Oak and I was like, I wonder if that, if playing MMOs has given me and the guys an advantage and things like that. And he's like, well, no, because old school games all had mechanics that you had to learn and things like that. So he completely disagreed There's, that we'd have a disadva- or an the, advantage just because of that. Those old school games that he's talking about are simple mechanics. Most games pre... MMOs, and this goes for all MMOs too, not just WoW. MMOs with bosses and whatnot usually come with some extreme mechanics and old school games. I mean, if you look at the most original classic game, Mario, there there are mechanics there. There's timing and things and dexterity, but it's it's mostly the same simple stuff. You jump over it, you jump over it, you time it right, and you jump over him, hit the little axe behind it, and you kill him. Yeah, look at okay. look at people doing speed runs through it. They 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 know what's coming up and uh, they know the timing and the mechanics behind it. Yeah, like those mechanics way back then were a whole lot simpler than say uh, the Cthulhu fight when it first came out. People were so fucking stuck on that damn thing that they're just like, what? The amount of shit that you have to do, that you have to balance, you got to make sure that so many people are aware of certain mobs, and it's just ridiculous. I'll go into the portal, destroy this, find the things, kill the eye, well, come does, back out. 
how does that translate over to because a lot of the things on this list actually everything on this list is a single player so how do you translate that into a single player experience where what you're mostly describing with the wow stuff is how to look out for the rest of your raid group instead of just how to how to take care of yourself because you're there by yourself with okay, chrono chrono trigger there there's one of the bosses that i got stuck on for a while um that no matter what you like elemental damage physical whatever that you do to it it basically sends it right back at you like tenfold or whatever okay so i had to go through and go all around the world find fire resistance gear and keep doing fire damage to it and then with the, the resistance gear it, it keeps it where i'm not taking as much damage i'm still taking damage from him but i'm not taking as much with all the the fire gear on all my people hmm Okay. I mean, even that. I mean, it's just figuring out how to uh, what you need to do in order to to get your Negate goal. Negate the it's, death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah, keep from dying. It, what's killing you? Okay. Well, he's throwing my my all my attacks of no matter what I do right back at me stronger. What can I get to to help that? There there's gear with fire resistance on it. I can go around and get up my party members all in fire resistance gear. That right. that'll help mitigate some of that damage. Okay, I could agree with that. It, it's problem solving. Basically, it teaches yep. you problem solving, and then you teach that, or you apply that to your single player experience. Yes. Okay. I Sitting can see there that. just shooting a boss over and over again, not working for you? Look around. There might be a, a button you have to hit in order to give uh, you an advantage again. I know, and I was trying so hard to think of some of the examples for this list, but I know. There have been bosses that I had to have, like, chicken come and help me on because I just, I couldn't figure it out. And, like, the only one that I can, rem- like, recall right off the top of my head was not so much that it was a mechanics issue. It was that it was in Silent Hill 2. You're in a tiny little room with a, the table boss, essentially. And the camera angle is all fucked up because it's an old PlayStation 2 game. So it puts the camera wherever it thinks is most convenient, which is usually not. And I could, I just couldn't do it. Like, it wasn't mechanics that I just couldn't figure out. It's just that I couldn't position myself in the right place. I think some of the old games should be on the list just because of that. It's like, Jesus, who well, decided I mean, this camera I mean, should be really here? You really started getting into the gaming with, like, the, the Xbox 360 where yes. now you have control of your camera angles and all that. Whereas the, the old school games, you didn't have any of that. So going from the newer stuff and being able to, to see and everything in all sorts of directions to try to go back to games with a a very very limited camera angle really throws you off it's difficult man i mean i loved silent hill 2 and i bought the collection um so i i really liked it it's just that that specific thing made that so much harder than it had to be i had a hard time with uh the the original resident evil game the the snake in the attic the because of how the the camera angles are set up Mm. in there i had a hard time dodging them sometimes (laughs) yeah Like damn it! Why can't you just make the camera follow? Especially me or when something? you start moving and you think you're you're uh, moving to dodge, and then all of a sudden the the camera angle shifts and it turns you around. <laughs> yes, I hated yes. that. Uh, and I know there are games that I have quit playing. Like I'm just like fuck this. This is stupid. I'm gonna it's stuff that we run in from GameFly, and it's like I'm just gonna send this back because I got mad. And I really legitimately cannot think of any of them that made me throw things. I know there were. I know they exist. Oh, I know what made you guys rage quit, but it wasn't a mechanic. Being so close to the safe room on Expert and Left for Dead, and then your teammate took two, three of you out with two shots. I don't know what would happen. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Chicken's like, I'm never uh, speaking to you again. Uh, no, that, 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 that was a griff mechanic. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing we could do about that. Playing a multiplayer game with me just adds a, a new difficulty curve to it, no matter what. We have so. to babysit you. That's not true. Not every game I have to be babysitted. It just changes the dynamic. <laughs> and Left 4 Dead, we gotta babysit you. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, one more boss I want to give an honorable mention to that has pissed me Go off since the days that it was created. But it's a Diablo 2 boss. Oh. It's... Which, which which boss are you? Which boss are you thinking here? Is it that um? Hold fail? on. No. No. Okay. Who? No. no the, all the bosses in there are difficult to an extent, but there's one that pisses me off more than anything else. Which one? I'm, I'm gonna see if Baki can figure it out. 
You know what? There are five, Baka. I, I, I know. I'm trying to think. Is it Mo Mephisto? Is he one of the ones? I don't know. I've always had a bitch-ass time with Diablo, though. Diablo's definitely a bitch, but my least favorite was Duriel. That fast son of a bitch with that holy freeze aura, he would sprint oh. up on you real quick and then smack you, and then you'd go slow, and you're like, no! And then he'd just keep <laughs> freezing you with his little fucking frosting, and you're like, no, get away from me! And you'd break free and hit him a time, and he'd run up and smack you again, and you're slow again, you're like, please, just, just I, I forgot shoot all me. Of, uh, well, I mean, I had gear to, to farm him after so long, but I, I don't... Uh, maybe uh, I forgot all of it. I always had a bitch ass time with Diablo though, but the, I was playing uh, uh, the Wolf Druid, and his AOE and everything else for some reason just wrecked me so hard, even with all my life leech. Ooh, uh, uh, talking about Diablo? Yeah. His Lightning Inferno, man. If you stand in that or take a few hits for it, your health will go boop and you'll die. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, his Lightning Inferno is one of the most powerful abilities in all of the Diablo games ever. It is so ridiculously powerful. Even in Heroes of the Storm, it is strong. Yeah, like, whenever I get it, I just do it in a cone, and everybody fucking scatters like flies. The best thing to do would be to use uh, Zarya and use her little gravity thing to put everyone in the center and then just let Diablo unleash. Or Leoric and entomb them so that they're all like in a little corridor and it's like, hi, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of them would still be able to get out of that, though. Some of them would get the, out of Zarya. Uh, the, the gravity thing, you... they, yeah, they can't... They have a harder time, though. Yeah, true. Because Lucio would just probably wall ride that and be like, later. <laughs> but I'm leaving now. <sighs> I don't know. I just, I saw that list and I was like, this is definitely something we can talk about. So, this has been fun. Yep. yep. And Goro um, was on the, the list too, but the, the only thing really annoying with him was um, where he'd like jump up in the air and then stomp on you repeatedly. That was like the, the most annoying mechanic. <laughs> I think anything that has a mechanic that, that knocks you down, like stuns you for an extended amount of time, is frustrating. Not that you should do away with all stuns. I'm just saying some of them seem a little more... Like, in Dragon Age 2, you, there's the dragon... Like, the one of the time that you get to fight a dragon in that fucking game. Um, but he'll pick up one of your party members and basically chew on them for way, what I think is just way too effing long. Because if he gets... If it's especially if it's not the tank, they're gonna die. Because he's gonna chew on them until their health is depleted, pretty much. There's just no no hope in saving them. And they can't do anything. They can't heal. Stupid Plymouth. Well, that's not even the Flemeth fight. That's Dragon Age 2. I know, but still. It's just a rando dragon. Rando dragon. I, I still think Flemeth is the hardest dragon. <laughs> well, I didn't have to fight her. I was just like, hey, can I have your book? And she said yes. Crisis averted. Can I have your book? Yeah, sure, no problem. I prioritize um, coercion in that game, in Dragon Age Origins. Because I, I feel the need to be able to persuade everybody so that I don't have to kill everything. And it's not I'd because I don't want it. to. It's because I want to be a good person. <laughs> I'd rather well. just kill it and be done with it. <laughs> I didn't Ugg know. Mad Ugg smash. I didn't know I had to kill the guys on the road. Like the first when you're headed into Lothering, that you get stopped by bandits that tell you have to pay a toll tax. Yeah. And I persuaded them to give me the money. I was like, the wardens could use a contribution, and the guy's like, fine. He gave me twenty silver when he was asking for ten from me. Oh, I and just then everybody and in town was like, so "Why well, you still had to go do it?" Because everybody in town's like, "You got to do something about the bandits." And I'm like, "Okay." So I still had to go back and and if you knock down the main bandit guy, everybody stops fighting and you can let them go away. I didn't know that until he was the only one left and all of his people were dead. Eh, they're bandits. Bandits gonna bandit. Uh... Serves them right for stealing from people. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I just I just got extra money. That's all. Uh, well, what are you all gonna be doing this week? What are you looking forward to before we see each other again next week? Which is not true because we'll see each other all week. But more whatever. More heroes, more Witcher. As, um, yeah, heroes, I gotta level up my mage more in in WoW. With heroes, uh, is it time for playing the games to get the officer diva skin? Yes. Yes. Okay. I need yeah, to do we, that. we gotta play five five games. So let's one shot. Your 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 eye of the storm, and then if we one shot eye of the storm, we're gonna freaking go play the D and D. Damn it, 
No. I've got Death Note that I need to watch. Sorry. Oh, shut up. Don't you start with me. <laughs> Have you never seen that series before? Some bitch, I've watched it five times. This is my sixth, ro- or my sixth run well, through Well, then, good. It. You'll know what the hell happens. Guess what? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's I, social time. He dies at the end. Yeah, I know. I, I know how Everybody everything plays out, but it's like watching a good movie. You just can't take your eyes off. You're like, oh, I never noticed that yes, before. Yes, but you, you can pause it for an extended period of time so we can... We Have you ever go gone there? Don't you? I want to play with more. Mar- don't you start with it. me? You're fucking. Uh, you get addicted to shit too. But I need to play this. Just give me a few more days. I need to play this. I need well, to watch we'll this. See. Somehow I doubt we're gonna get uh, the Eots achievement in one run. So we'll see what happens after that. Um, Chicken and I are still doing Red Dead Redemption, which I, Chicken thinks that we're really close to the end of the game, so maybe we are. I don't know. Mm. Um, we didn't have any videos last week. Sorry about that. The weather did not allow us to record, and Sundays are pretty much our only time to do that. Um, so we'll have two up this week, and we'll see where that gets us. Hopefully it won't be as creepy as last week's, or week before last. <laughs> I swear Rockstar just has some like a group of people sitting in a closet together going, what's the weirdest, most off-the-wall shit that nobody would expect to see in a game? Okay, let's let's see how we can make that fit into the plot. Actually, no. sometimes they get their uh, ideas from people online. Like the the whole Bigfoot thing. That all stemmed from... Well, the Bigfoot from... thing, that's, that's fine. That's not shocking. In Red Dead Redemption, the last time we recorded, the guy that took us across to Mexico then, like, basically grabbed a horse dick whilst we were standing there. It's like, ah... Can you, can um, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And then you get stuff like Trevor, which is just like, uh, you're really creepy, but at the same time, it makes me laugh. But I really shouldn't. Like, if we were, if this was real life, I'd be 100% uncomfortable. So, oh mm. damn it, I got brain matter on my shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go wipe that off, Trevor. <laughs> that that seems like the most tame thing when it comes to Trevor. Well, he Mr. has a Raspberry teddy bear strapped jam. to the front like of that's, his car. Yes, Mr. Raspberry Jam. No, I just... Who at Rockstar... Let them out of the closet every now and then, Rockstar, please. It's getting weird. <sighs> anyway. Either that or they just let them, like, drift onto the dark side of the internet and that's the only internet access they're allowed to have. Oh, that'd be sad. And gross. <sighs> Anyway, um, I've got a couple of music videos in the works. Those will be up at some point. Keep an eye on Twitter and whatnot. Mm. And um, I guess that's it for the week. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to go to the Twitter at InfiniteResPC. You can find us all individually. I'm at Grimslinum. Chicken is... At Elite Chicken 313 Baka is... At Baka Pickle. Yay! Uh, InfiniteRespawn.com is the website. You should go there. Um, YouTube. Don't forget to sub there. I don't know. I'm really bad at this part of the show. Like, super bad at that, it. That's, that's, like, we should have Oak record this so we can just play at the end. Uh, you want me to open up this picture? You want me to open up the old video? I'll let him, I'll just let it run through. We, we can just have a picture of him and then, like, someone pulled the string so his mouth moves. Uh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, since we're really bad at We can make this... a puppet Oak, and then I can just... No. Why don't we just get a tree? <laughs> So it's a really bad at ending this. We're just going to say that we did a great job. Thanks for hanging out, everybody, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Everybody say bye. Bye. <laughs>